you. Finally, finally the attention I deserve. Happy Wednesday, everyone. So mental illness really is a problem in this country. Of course, history shows that the mentally ill have always been with us. But now, <laughs> our mostly Democrat-run cities are awash in serious mental cases roaming the streets. It's sad. Several decades ago, this country decided that institutionalizing our mentally ill was somehow a violation of their rights. It's a pretty unique take on the Constitution, that it's every citizen's right to eat from garbage cans and treat our sidewalks like toilets. I don't remember James Madison actually adding that. What we should have realized by now is that allowing those who can't care for themselves to attempt to care for themselves isn't respecting their rights. It's condemning them to hunger, disease, and a lonely death on a frozen sidewalk, much like the future of any CNN anchor. <laughs> But any caring society should do what it can to help those who can't help themselves. Now, to be clear, when I say mentally ill, I'm talking about those who are truly broken, the ones who live on the streets in an alternate reality, who scream at demons who aren't there, and who hear voices, and who all too often listen to the voices that tell them to hurt someone. Those voices never tell raving psychos to do anything positive, like, say, retire. <laughs> So considering how much damage to themselves and society the mentally ill do, why isn't more being done to actually help? Well, as the old saying goes, follow the money. Today in our city and state governments, the homeless industrial complex has become a power silo, just like any other. In NYC, every day feels more menacing and predictable than Dana Perino before her midday nap. And yet the Department of Homeless Services employs 2,000 people and has an annual budget that has grown to over $2 billion. And take a guess who controls all those jobs, all that money? It's almost always Dems. Apparently, insanity is voting for the same party over and over and expecting different results. So every time a disturbed homeless guy pushes a woman in front of a subway car, homeless service executives, they don't hear the screams, they hear cash registers. The homicidal maniacs are putting their kids through college. More empathy, they demand, more personnel, more cars, more pensions, but somehow, never more tough love. Never anything that actually works, because then the problem would be solved, and a solved problem means no more money. It's a swamp of a different sort, one that we're all stuck in, especially if you live in a dem-run, crappy city. So it sounds like we need someone to drain that swamp. And who might volunteer? You know... I wonder, when he's back in the White House, will he use every tool, lever, and authority to get the homeless off our streets? When I'm back in the White House, we will use every tool, lever, and authority to get the homeless off our streets. And for those who are severely mentally ill and deeply disturbed, we will bring them back to mental institutions where they belong, with the goal of reintegrating them back into society once they are well enough to manage. Hmm, sort of seems like common sense, doesn't it? And do you want proof of that? Well, the ACLU opposes it. Now, there's nothing a progressive likes more than a new grievance group. Adding mentally ill homeless to the roster of the oppressed is yet another big ka for them. Soon, they'll hear voices telling them to vote for Joe Biden. But there's a limit to how much money even Washington can churn out. The printing presses are starting to melt down. And so finally, even some Dem cities are feeling the heat. In Boston, the Democrat mayor signed legislation that takes effect today, allowing cops to dismantle a homeless encampment known as the Methadone Mile. Trust me, no matter what the, 20, the Century 21 agent tells you, don't buy in a neighborhood with that name. <laughs> also starting this month, police in Portland will be able to enforce a ban on what officials there are calling daytime camping. Daytime camping. <laughs> It's the perfect liberal euphemism. You know, like shooting heroin between your toes is something you learned in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> and after residents and store owners in Phoenix brought a lawsuit, a federal judge is forcing that city to clean out a downtown homeless camp known as The Zone. So what's going on here? Well, maybe some Democrats know they're in trouble and are going a bit Trumpy as we approach an election year. But as someone, once great, someone great once said, never confuse movement with action. I think it was my gastroenterologist. Because <laughs> as these officials move the homeless around, none of them will use Trump's key phrase, 
we will bring the severely disturbed to mental institutions. That's right. It's that thing every parlor revolutionary dreads force, which is necessary or it won't work. Crazy people rarely agree that they're crazy. Now, studies throughout history have shown that humans find green surroundings in a quiet countryside soothing. But what could be better for the mentally ill, for whom every honking horn can be a torture? Forcibly bringing the truly disturbed to countryside facilities where they can be given two hots and a cot and treated humanely, and it, with even the possibility of release at some point, that's not treading on their rights. It's salvaging their most basic right to live with dignity and not die alone in degradation among maddening crowds and diesel belching buses. And it'll ultimately be cheaper than the endless catch and release programs that we have now. But like so many other good ideas, it has two key fatal flaws. It makes perfect sense, and there's no money in it. Because if they fixed homelessness, those bureaucrats would be the ones out in the street. Let's welcome tonight's guests. Make fun of her glasses, and she'll kick all of your asses. Host of Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy. Finally, someone named Hunter who didn't bang his brother's widow. Comedian Adam Hunter. Her last name is only one of 648 words that end in <laughs> New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Kat Kemp. <laughs> and fans in China call him the Greater Wall. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and for and former WNA. <laughs> Kennedy, uh, Trump's idea is a good one, but that won't matter because it comes from Trump. Have you never seen Ghost Adventures? No. Every time these ghost hunting shows go to the most haunted place in the world, it's always former asylums. This is a horrible idea because <laughs> all you're doing is creating generations of ghosts that are eternally damned. And mm. that's because of involuntary commitment. Involuntary commitment is one of the most grievous sins this country and our culture oh. has ever committed uh, yes. against so you can't prove upon that? Uh, again, you, you absolutely can, but I would rather see treating people who are deeply mentally ill with things like psychedelics. Mm. I think there are entire tools at our disposal that the federal government has kept us from really investigating that would truly heal people. And I think that is much more revolutionary than repeating what we've done in the past, which hasn't worked. And I miss hobos. Yeah. The, the, the Hemingway description <laughs> of the homeless where it was adventuring with a stick and a handkerchief and a can of beans, we need to bring that That's back. That's called a bindle. <laughs> called a bindle. By the way, okay, I'm with you on psychedelics, but I don't think you can mix and match a severely mental ill person with, say, uh, psilocybin. You can't, but, but it's not gonna work. That's not, that's actually a worse idea because you just assume it could solve every type of mental illness. I'd like to try. I'd, well, I'd, I'd like to wouldn't? have a program where, where we try that. All right, all right. Adam, this is the problem. If, if you're against forcing people into treatment, you will never have treatment for a lot of people. Yeah, well, I'm now classifying myself as deeply mentally ill, uh, <laughs> if they're gonna start doing that. <laughs> um, no, it's, but it's a problem. I mean, in Los Angeles, there's tents everywhere, and I'm like, I gotta cheer these people up, so I went on and got a bear costume, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> to give them the full camping experience, you know? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I was a uh, cocaine bear. Cocaine um, bear. <laughs> but no, it's gotten so bad, there was a guy trying to Airbnb his tent. Um, By the way, there were people getting close to that, like electricity, you know, appliances. It, it's crazy. I mean, I, I mean it's like, you know, my, my, my cousin was at a mental hospital, and uh, he would hear voices. And unfortunately, none of them were, don't ask your cousin for money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, something's got to be done. I don't know what. Yeah. It, it, I mean. Everybody, cat stops at the, you can't force people to do anything. But if somebody, if we put people in prisons who are a danger to others, at some point, we have to like acknowledge that we have to move beyond just this, like, let's protect their rights when they're harming other people. You, you can't understand even a little bit what the concern might be about giving the government vague power to lock people up against their will just for saying that they're crazy. I'm sure there's people in the government right now that would say that I'm crazy. 
<laughs> Even though I'm clear, okay, yeah, my life's falling apart. My life's falling apart. I got nothing going for me. Oh, jeez. Uh, you know, but people will say you're crazy, like like men, for example. Men love to say women are crazy, right? They're like, she's so crazy. She's so crazy. I don't talk to her anymore because she's so crazy. But they leave out the sometimes years of <laughs> that they put the girl through to make her react that way. <laughs> So I, no, I don't trust the government to give vague powers to lock people up in institutions. What do you think, Tyrus? I think it should be a volunteer program. Mm. And I think you and I should volunteer. Yes. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think leave them all outside. And us who are really crazy with like facts and problem solving abilities, we go to in the facilities. Mm -hmm. We just check ourselves in. And I'm sorry, kids, you can't come. Daddy's sick. But. Everyone makes a point, but you, there has to be, because we're forced to live with them. Mm -hmm. We're forced to deal with them. We're forced to see the, the, the effects when a woman's beaten, when she's down the street, and they're like, well, it's because of this. It's, well, it's because of this. And we've, the word mental health is just like racist. Mm. It doesn't mean anything anymore because everyone has something. Everyone is a triggered. Everyone True. is. Everyone acts like they 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 have PTSD from having to graduate, you know, from a private school. So <laughs> it's true. Like you know, and like oh, someone told me no once in the supermarket, and I've never gotten over it. <laughs> I never forgave my mother for not giving me Captain Crunch that day. Mm. You know, but that's the that's the thing of it. So it is it has to take force because they're in the encampments because this is it. You force them all to live together because they don't like living together. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the issues that they're having is someone's trying to steal. There's nothing more, when you're homeless, there's nothing more terrifying to you than someone taking what little you have. Mm -hmm. So you will guard that with, by any means necessary. Something as simple as us holding an orange, mm -hmm. we won't think of a big deal. But to a homeless person, they don't know where that orange is coming from. And they're surrounded by people who will take it from them. So especially for women in homeless encampments, it's literally every day, their head's on a swivel. Mm. Uh, I remember one time we were doing a big giveaway, and we're giving clothes away, and this woman brought all these beautiful dresses to give to homeless women to make them feel better, and every one of them said, there's not a chance in hell I'm taking a dress. Mm -hmm. I need pants. I need three or four pairs of pants. Mm -hmm. so, because a, the dress is no defense against men. So there needs to be something forced. I would have taken give those them dresses. <laughs> Yes, she would have, but you weren't afraid of saying, you know, having your clothes ripped off you in the middle of the night. Yeah. If you did that, you'd have to pay a lot of money. Yes. All right, the that was a is, thoughtful it, conversation. But it's a, th something has to be done ugly yeah. to be pretty. But th you both have good points with, yeah, yeah, I don't want the government to say one day, hey, you know, yeah. Tyrus. Hey, you're crazy. You Tyrus got to go. Yeah. If, you, if you push somebody in front of a subway and you say you, you, got, you still go to prison. I'm pretty, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. there definitely already but we have are to wait. laws against that. But we have to wait for that. That's the thing. We have to wait for that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.